Hey everyone, it's Sherry of Sherry's Plants and today is my second video in the series of setting up my new life planner and I'm going to show you how I'm going to fix my planner. Oops! So my planner, oops, if you read from the description, is I accidentally ordered a 12-month calendar year planner. So I have a January through December 2022 planner. And it was totally my mistake when I ordered it. I had thought I was ordering the academic year. I accidentally ordered a calendar year. And I thought for sure when I made the order, when I received it, that I would have to buy a whole new planner at launch. I thought like, this is not what I want. I need a planner for the rest of the year for one. And then like, it's just, it was a disaster. Like I was, I was pretty upset about it, but I quickly realized how easy it would be for me to redate what I have and make it work for me without having to buy a whole new planner. So, so I do have the vertical life planner starting with January, 2022. Let me flip through to July and show you guys what this looks like. So I have here, I've already redated my monthly spreads. And what I used were these individual date covers from Planner Kate. And these are available in her shop under the EC and PK colorways tab. And I purchased these in the EC colorways for July through December. And I picked these because I like the, the style and the font of the date covers for the month. There is an option. She does have an option for like one full sheet of color dots in the EC colorways and you get the whole year on one sheet and that's only $5.50. I did choose these. Um, they're $1.50 a piece, like I said, because I like the font, but I redate my uh, weekly. I use date covers anyways on my weekly spread, so I can definitely make use out of these date covers as well. So I'm not too worried about it, but that's what I did to redate my monthly spread. And I've also got these 2021 stickers. These are from, I think like they're the binder labels. She's got like assortment of binder labels uh, for like sticker books. And they came with like 12 of these uh, 2021 labels on them. So I use those to just like cover up the 2022 and the rest of this planner. And I've also whited out the holidays. I use my Tombow mono correction tape. I love this tape from, I purchased it on Amazon. I got like a box of them for $10 and it's lasted me four years. I probably bought it a couple years ago and it, oh, I'm, no, I probably bought this like three or four years ago now. Um, it's been a while, but I absolutely love it. It's my favorite tape. And I just covered up all the holidays, all the extra dates on here. And yeah, so that's what that looks like. And then on the dashboard page, again, I just used the 2021 sticker to cover that up. So then on my weekly spreads, if you've seen any of my planner spreads on Instagram or here on YouTube for the last few years, I've actually been redating my weeklies to have a Sunday start. For me, it just works better to plan that way with the Sunday start. And since Erin Condren's calendars come with a Monday start, I always use date covers from the sticker kits that I buy. So I purchase the sticker kits. I purchase usually like the individual date covers like this and I redate my weekly spreads anyways. So that's not gonna be a difference in expense for me. It's not gonna be a huge deal. It's kind of something I've already been doing anyways. But if you are redating a planner, um, you can definitely use like these like squares. You can buy like another sheet of this. This is gonna last you like a whole month on your weekly spreads. Um, or like again, that sheet of date covers, uh, the date dots from uh, Planner Kate that matches the EC colorway as well. So that those are my recommendations. Um, as far as the calendars here, the sidebar here, I did white out this 2022 under the June. And what I think I might do is in this area right here, um, I might cover up that calendar with a full box sticker. I'm not 100% sure yet, but this is, I think I, I might like that down here better than in the top corner. So yeah, I'll probably use full box stickers from the kits to cover that up. Yeah, so that's what this looks like. I've just done that on every month from July through December. So I've redated the monthly spreads. I've whited out all the holidays and extra dates on here. And yeah, that's just pretty much how it looks like the um, 
dashboard page is all set up the same as well with the 2021 sticker on there. So yeah, that's how I've got the rest of this set up. So that's pretty much how I'm fixing my oops. Once I realized like how easy and really inexpensive it was gonna be to just buy some stickers and redate them that way, I don't think like the fact that there's stickers on it is gonna bother me at all. I usually put, I don't know, I usually use stickers. I don't think it's something that's gonna bother me at all. It's a much cheaper option than buying an entirely new planner because I made a mistake. So that is that. The next thing I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm going to uncoil and recoil my planner here for you guys today. I have a video from last year where I posted like a little how-to on how to uncoil and recoil it. And I'm pretty much gonna do that again because this is part of my planner setup. So what I like to do, I actually got this idea from Lakin, from Plan With Lakin um, years ago, probably three years ago when I was watching her. She, um, when she used to use the Eric Hondred planner, she would only carry around six months at a time on her coil. And she would do that because it gets so thick using stickers. So I've been doing that for at least the last couple years and I'm gonna do that for you guys right now. So let me show you what I've got here. I'm gonna move the date covers cause I don't need these. I don't need the correction tape. And there's a few reasons why I like to do this and why I totally recommend it. And I hope maybe this gives you some encouragement and some confidence to uncoil and recoil your own planner. I know a lot of people get nervous um, and they make some mistakes when they're uncoiling and recoiling their planner, but I really hope this um, helps you and gives you that confidence to try it yourself if, if you're like me um, and use a lot of stickers when you plan. I think this is a great way to do that without carrying too much bulk in your planner and then also what I'm going to do guys is I'm going to I'm going to add some notes pages to my planner because I like to have a lot of notes pages at the end of my planner. I'm not 100% how I'm going to use all the notes pages in there just yet, so I'm going to make sure I've got plenty in there to um to use throughout the year. I'm going to add some dot grid and I'm going to add some graph pages to this. So, check this out. Here's what we're going to do first. I, you saw me take the covers off. I took the perpetual calendar out. Everything, all the extra stuff that's hanging out in there is out. So here she is. I'm gonna try to like make sure we've got everything all nice and flat and lined up here. And I've got a couple of these really big binder clips, guys. Like get, I don't know if, I don't know if this is the biggest you can get, but these are very big. So if I line this up, we're just gonna pinch the top of our planners there. And we're gonna pinch the bottom as well. And everything's all lined up here, okay? So let me tell you guys what I'm gonna do first. Okay, well, first of all, I've got these little pliers here. And these are actually, I found these on Amazon. Um, I'll try to link them if I can find them again because I did purchase these a while ago. But these are like jewelry clamps or little needlepoint um, pliers. There you go, that's the word. The little jewelry needlepoint pliers. And they've just got like a rounded edge in here. They're not like um, your needlepoint pliers um, you're gonna find in like your toolkit because those are gonna have like ridges on the end. And those ridges are really gonna make your, um, they can mess up your coil a lot. Um, but, Using these, like it doesn't really damage my coil too much. I've seen people use, and I've actually tried it before, but like putting some washi on your coil or not on the coil, but around the needle, to around these um tips here. And I don't think there's a difference. I've tried it both ways and I don't really think there's a difference. So I'm not gonna waste some washi doing that. But you can definitely, maybe if you've got like the ones with the ridges, it might be better. But again, I've seen it just tear through the washi anyway. So these are what I've been using. Um, they seem to work really well for me. So let me tell you guys what we're going to do here. We've got our planner uh, clamped with these big binder clips, okay? What we're going to do is I'm going to work on the bottom of, I'm only going to use, I'm only going to touch this end of 
the planner, this end of the coil. And the reason why I just used this end is so only one of my ends, it's gonna be inevitable. You are gonna make some marks on that coil, but only one end is gonna be marked from your clips. So if you only use one end, and I just picked the bottom because it's at the bottom, I'm not looking at it where I might see it at the top more. This is just how my logic is on it. Um, choose whatever end you want to do. But again, I only recommend doing one end, but I'm going to use the bottom end. And what we're going to try to do guys is we're going to try to, we're going to gently bend this coil and we're going to try to get this end to follow the coil here, to follow the uh, curvature of this coil. Okay. So we're going to try to bend this. So it follows this around here. Okay. I hope that's kind of making sense for you, but it really doesn't take too much to do it. So I haven't done it with this planner yet, but I've done it many times. I actually did it with the notebooks that I had just a minute ago to get some dot grid and some graph pages out of there. So it's totally something that you can do. So I'm just trying to get this bend out of here just a little bit. Okay, I'm actually pretty happy with the way this is right here. So let me try to make sure you guys can see what I'm working with here. So this is how I've uncoiled it. And this is how it's following. It is following the curvature of my coil. So it's not sticking out. It's following it pretty nicely. I try to get this bend out here as much as I could. It's going to help make it easier when I go to uncoil it, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're just going to start uncoiling it, okay? And kind of what you have to do when you're getting around this first loop here is I take the top of this and I just have to guide this end up and over the pages. But you don't want to bend this too much because that's going to help keep your coil looking nice and good at the top of your planners. So you're just going to follow this along here. And you can see too, I do get a little bit of resistance around this hump right here. And you can see I've some of these marks were already made on there from when they've, um, when they hand coiled the, um, planner when they made it, but I've got like one, two, three little nicks on there. So it's not going to be too bad. It's not going to be super noticeable, but I do recoil my planner at the very beginning when I get it like I am right now. And then I'll uncoil it again at the, you know, in December, at the end of December, I'll uncoil it and take everything off. I'll put my uh, January through June on there. And then at the end of the year, at the end of June, I will again recoil everything and try to fit everything on one coil. So I know some people buy an 18 month planner and it's definitely something I'm considering. Um, I just don't like to waste those um, extra six months, but I, I have heard that the coil is bigger on an 18 month and it's definitely something I'm reconsidering because um, maybe, maybe I'll film it, but if you guys want a good laugh, try to watch me recoil 12 months of planner on a, using sticker kits on every single week. Okay. Um, well, you'll see, um, coming up in during this month in the middle of my series of videos, setting up this planner, um, I am going to be showing you guys some of my past planners and those have a lot of sticker kits in them and those uh, planners are very thick. So you guys will get a look at that. So, and then you might be wondering what I'm going to do with the January through June, how I'm going to store it without being on a planner. I'm going to put it inside of the storage box that the planners came in. So that's how I'll keep it, um, safe and protected and put together. So I don't lose stuff and doesn't get messed up. All right, so I'm gonna take these binder clips off now. We've got our coil taken off. I'm gonna take those off. And I'm pretty much gonna decide right now what I'm gonna keep in this planner and what I'm gonna take out. So the only thing I think I'm gonna take out is just the January through June. So we're gonna keep all these pages here. 
We're gonna keep our year at a glance. We're gonna keep our 12 month goal boxes. And we are going to take all of this. And yeah, I'm even gonna take, um, yeah, I'm definitely gonna do this. This is what I'm gonna do. So this is gonna be the beginning. This is where I think I'm gonna have my 10,000 daily steps page at the beginning of the planner. So this is all I'm taking out. I've got that over there. Oh, what I'm also going to take out is if I go all the way to the end here, I'm gonna take out the sticker sheets that are coiled in. Leaving that forward planning there. And, but I, thought, I take these out because I tend to forget about them if they're sitting in the back of my planner. But if I have them outside, I can like visually see them as I'm searching through my stickers for something. So I'm taking those out. Uh, we're keeping the pocket. What I'm going to do though in this, before the context page, I am going to put... Like I said, I've got some dot grid and some graph pages that I want to add in. I don't really know how much I want to. So there is, I have some more line pages um, to put in if I want to do that. But I've got a handful of those. This I'm going to move anyways. Let's do four of each. And we'll go dot grid and then graph. So just off the top of my head, um, I might use like the dot grid for um, some weight loss tracking. The, those are, that's a page that I've used before. I might use like the, the dot grid or the graph pages for like these pen tests and like the EC colorways. These are just some of the ideas that I have already um, penciled in on some of my notes pages. And yeah, so I'm just tucking those pages in there in the back. And now I've got just the last six months of the year all ready to go on my getting recoiled again. So to me, guys, I like I've done this. I can't tell you how many times I've probably uncoiled and recoiled planners at least two dozen times. So I feel pretty confident in what I'm doing. And I'm really hoping that what I'm showing you here is going to help you out because I know a lot of people get nervous about doing it. And I don't want you to be. I want you to feel confident in doing this. So I'm really just trying to line up these um, stickers here or the, the holes. I'm sorry, the holes rather on these pages. And this one page here wants to seem to be super difficult. Try tapping these around a few different ways to try to get them lined up the best you can. But that one page just wants to be super difficult. Oh, I think it's good enough. We're gonna put our binder clips back on here and then we're gonna grab our coil and start recoiling it again. So since this is the bottom, we're gonna start at the top of the planner and just kind of work our way down. And like, I didn't get mine lined up perfectly here. Um, so I'm just getting like a little bit of resistance. Just do this slowly, guys. I, I really recommend just taking your time and doing this slowly because the end of this coil is jagged and um, you can get caught up on some pages and on the vellum and just tear up the around the hole a little bit or maybe just, it usually doesn't do too much damage. But I like to just keep this controlled right here as it's coming out and not force anything. This is pretty much like what I'm gonna do before I set up any life planner. I don't wanna say any life planner. This is like my weekly life planner. This is what I've been doing for the last few years. This is what I know, this is what I like. So this works for me. I hope this um, video was helpful for you guys. If you, um, let me know if, it, if you uh, try to recoil or if you've done it before, um, if you have any tips for others, leave them in the comments of this video, or if you, if your first time recoiling it is after watching this video, let me know. So like I was saying, I, um, have uncoiled notebooks as well to get graph, those graph and lined pages and, uh, the dot grid pages. I'll uncoil a notebook to get those pages to put into 
my notes section as well. So even if you're just somebody who wants to add some extra note pages to your planner, this would be a really good idea. But honestly, if you're somebody that uses a lot of sticker kits, um, especially if you take your life planner like to or from work or school with you, this might be a good option for you is just to carry those six months in there at a time. So another option is you can leave the monthly spreads in there and just pull the weekly spreads out if that's something you want to do where you you're like kind of like you want a smaller planner but you need those monthly spreads to forward plan that far in advance you could definitely do that what i usually do if i have something to forward plan is like put it on some sticky notes and just put it like on the last um monthly spread like i said it's this is something that's a system that's worked out for me really well and i hope it helps you out now i've do got one more tip here for you Okay, so I've got the coil all back on here and what we're going to do is I'm gonna take this end and we're gonna tuck it back in, okay? What you really wanna do is try to get this to line up with the top of this coil. So you see how this is tucked in and it's at the very top, it's in that center line? That's how I want this end to be. I'm going to take this in and I'm going to tuck it back in under here. So I kinda of just take it right here at the bend I'm gonna take it a little bit. I'm just gonna grab that end and just pull it in just a little bit. So what you really want is you really want this top end to like line up and match with this bottom end. And doing it this way is one is gonna keep you're not going to make any more extra bins in the bottom of this. You can see how easily it just tucked in there for me. If I want to, I might just try to like flatten it out a little bit. And that's like going to be not in the way at all when I'm like turning pages or anything. And it's going to work out perfectly. And you can't even tell unless you get really up in there that I've made any marks to my coil. And yes, I use the rose gold coil. So, but yeah, you can't hardly even tell that it was recoiled at all. Now we can take our binder clips off. Again, if you've done this correctly, you're not gonna have like any loose pages. So definitely something to be careful of. But yeah, there she is. Um, we're going to put our covers back on. So it looks super thin now, like with you have like a really big coil, but once you start using sticker kits every week, like this thing will fatten up fast. I'll show you guys a quick example or quick comparison rather to my current life planner. So this is the beginning of June we're filming this. So I only have six months in this current life planner and this is six months in my new life planner and you can already see how thick this is compared to this. And this is sticker kits, using sticker kits every every week. I'm using sticker kits, I'm using sticker kits in the month on the dashboard. So if you're like somebody who's gonna use a lot of stickers, this is definitely an option. I totally recommend doing this. So you can see the difference there. And yeah, it just thickens up really quick. So that is part two of my planner series. I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope you um I hope it was helpful. Again, um, if you're redating your planner or if you need to uncoil and recoil it, I hope this helps you guys out. Um, also, another I've seen a lot. I've seen so many good ideas on what people do to uncoil and recoil their planners. So if you want some really quick ideas, I'm just spitballing these off the top of my head. What I've seen, I've seen people um, take like the EC Daily Duo and their weekly and combine those together. Now that is definitely gonna thicken up any coil. So I think what they've done is put like uh, four months on a coil at a time, um, three months. Yeah, I think they've put three months on a coil at a time, three or four months, but that way you, you're only carrying around like so much daily and weekly spreads. So that's an option to combine the daily and the uh, weekly spreads if you need kind of like the best of both wor worlds and you only want to carry around one planner that's definitely an option the other thing i've seen is um taking like another monthly planner 
and your life planner and putting them together where you might have like appointments and schedules on one monthly spread and then on the other monthly spread you have like um, your bills that you're tracking or how much spending you have done on those days your purchases you've made and you use the other monthly uh, planner spread for that so I've seen a couple different things there's definitely some other options that you can do with your planners to recoil and uncoil them Another thing you can definitely do is we have the new A5 coils. We've got the horizontal planner and the daily duo and the A5 coil size. You can do the exact same thing I just did with the A5 size. It's the same coil. I mean, it's just a smaller size paper. So if you want to combine, again, you've got the horizontal or the daily you want to combine in there. A um, couple different options. So definitely... Definitely some options out there. And if you have confidence in uncoiling and recoiling, like you can totally customize your planner. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful for you. Um, please let me know in the comments if you have any other further questions, if there was something I wasn't clear about. But I hope it was super helpful for you guys. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, this is my second video in a series of six of setting up my life planner. Um, so please remember to like this video, subscribe so you see all those other videos coming out in the series. Remember to follow me on Instagram. I've got some links in the description below. Um, if you use any of my affiliate links, it really helps me out as a content creator. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you all next time. Bye, everyone.